All right, what is up guys? It is Josh back with another video. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually record your very own YouTube videos. I'm going to be going through all the equipment you can do, the kind of setup, what you want to be going for, different tips and tricks, little script tips for your intros, how you can actually execute recording your videos. I'm going to go over how you can like clip Fortnite, how you can use Streamlabs OBS. Uh, so pretty much a full in-depth guide of how you can record your own YouTube videos, like I said. Before I actually get into it though, I just want to say about 70% of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel yet. Make sure to drop a sub. It's 100% free for you guys to do and you can change your mind at a later date. But uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys do enjoy. I will see you guys on my phone in a second. I'm going to be swapping between the two POVs. I'm going to be showing like my recording setup, different tips and tricks for that. And then we'll be swapping over to my PC. I'll show you all the stuff on that for Streamlabs OBS, all the settings, all that stuff. But I will see you guys on my phone after a quick word from today's sponsor, Core. Core is a brand new PC gaming platform that allows you to create, share, and play PC games with your friends. The cool thing about it is it's 100% free to download, create, and play. There are over 40,000 games on the platform in different genres, and there are new ones being added every single day. You can create and customize your own avatar that you can bring with you into your own games, and you can unlock a ton of customization options by completing quests. Another cool feature is that it allows you to jump between multiple games almost instantly with no extra downloads. And the platform itself boasts a lot of social features such as the friends list, party options, and voice chats. The reason why I'm promoting Core to you guys is because they have an affiliates program for YouTubers, TikTokers, and Twitch streamers. All Core affiliates receive rewards for creating video content on Core, and they can receive up to $2,500 a month. Affiliates also receive free in-game cosmetics, access to early patch notes, and promotion on the official Core social media. You can also host sponsored Core events that allow you to have an exclusive prize pool for your audience. Whether you're a growing channel or an established creator, Core encourages everybody to apply to their affiliates program. Make sure to check out the first link in the description to check out the Core affiliate program learn more apply today and download core for 100 free i hope you guys do enjoy the video all right guys so i'm gonna give you a brief walkthrough of my recording setup and i'm gonna kind of walk you through everything that i have set up to make it the way that it is for when i'm recording my intros and videos so for here we have my setup positioned in a corner right here um and then i have my camera right here it's a canon rebel t7 i'm gonna get into camera specifics probably later in the video and just talk to you guys about what camera you should go for depending on where your channel's at but yeah i invested in this camera same time last year i got it for christmas uh, I am recording this video on Christmas 2021, so I got it last year, exactly a year ago today. And uh, yeah, it served me very well. It's a very good camera for the price. It's about $400, but it's a very budget-friendly camera. It can shoot like uh, 720, 60 FPS, which is what I normally record my intros on. And uh, it can do 1080, 30. So those are your two options for that. Uh, for lighting right here, I'm gonna get into lighting in a second after this, but I'm gonna show you, I pretty much just have a ring light that has a webcam position there. I have that position towards my chair. That way it gives a kind of nice lighting towards my face. So when my camera's recording this way, it shows uh, kind of lighting on my face and it looks good like that. And then I have a panel light over there that I can adjust the brightness, the color, warmth, all that stuff facing towards kind of the side of my face when I am recording. That way it kind of illuminates my entire face and it looks very good on camera. We have my monitor's position here. I just have my recording set up there. I'll be getting into that in a second. Um, in a bit, just kind of how you can set up your camera for recording, your Streamlabs for recording, all that stuff. And then lastly, we have those pink floor lights in the back, in the corner that kind of illuminates a nice little thing in the background. And then like you can see, we have the foam panels in the wall. And I'll actually be getting into kind of what you want to be going for, for like a setup in a second for your background and all that, because that also can make a massive difference on your viewer's perspective on kind of how your channel is and all that stuff. And then lastly, we have our microphone phone for audio that just kind of is on the corner of the desk going towards my chair and then we have our chair ewan racing chair super nice looks kind of clean with the setup i'm not gonna lie we had a red msi one before but yeah that's pretty much that that's how my desk is set up it's in an l shape i am looking to get stuff on the back don't mind the mess um i have some random stuff on the back there didn't really feel like cleaning it for the video i'm not one of those people that just clean clean the desk for a video honestly i just leave it the way it is if it is messy it's messy if it's not it's not and it's snowing, by the way, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, so pretty much um, I'm going to be talking about the background now. So what you want to be going for, I know you guys can probably see that, um, but I have my camera positioned in a way that we can actually see foam panels in the background. Obviously, if we wanted it to be a bit better, we can raise it a bit, kind of depending on how we want our tripod to be. It just depends on positioning in our chair. 
Um, and then, you know, I have this adjustable tripod from Amazon that I can make it higher or lower. And I constantly mess around with the thing. And then it also comes with this nice little um, handle that you can adjust the camera with instead of having to turn the camera itself. But for your background, you want something kind of clean, something simplistic, you want a really cool uh, background. So for this, I recommend maybe like some sort of wallpaper or foam panels. I would definitely recommend investing in these. These will be in the description. They are like these foam panels. I bought like three packs of 24. So I think there's 72 in total. Don't quote me on that, but you guys, if you want to, you can count. There's about 72. There was one up there that's missing now. Um, it's actually on the floor because it fell off. But I bought three packs of these. They're about 50 bucks a pack. So it was about $150 to cover this entire section. But trust me, it makes a massive difference in recording your videos in the background for that. The next thing I'm gonna get into is the lighting for your background. Um, I have these panel lights, or not panel lights, but they're called floodlights. They're RGB floodlights. I can control them with a nice little RGB controller that's somewhere on my desk over there. I have them set to either pink or white all the time, and they're about $30 each, or you can get a pack of two for $50. Those are on Amazon as well. I'll have all the links to the stuff in the description. Don't worry about that. But that's how I have a nice little illuminated light in the corner, and we can see on the camera it has <laughs> and I'm not, I can't speak English right now, but right here we can see all along that bottom part. It adds a nice little illumination to our uh, scene, if that makes sense. And then uh, if you want to, you can add like Funko Pops or something along your desk or spin the wheel, depending on what you use for your videos. But yeah, I gotta kind of reimagine what I want to do with this desk because I recently just moved my desk back here. We know before my desk was looking pretty clean before, back when it was in that corner, but we had to move it here because there was a flood. And I just recently brought my stuff back down to the basement. So kind of got to reimagine that and uh, hopefully we can move from there. But now what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about kind of your camera setup and your lighting specifically. All right. So getting into the lighting, we can see right here, I'll show you the massive difference that the ring light makes. So if we turn it off, we can see that it's kind of, I don't even know how to explain it, but it adds just a nice little touch. We can see that even on the desk, if we turn it off like that, it just adds a nice little brightened look, but I hope you get what I'm saying. It does make a massive difference. I would invest in a $30 ring light from Amazon. You can get them from Amazon, eBay, wherever you want. Definitely recommend no matter how big your channel is, if you're just a starter, invest in a ring light, man. Do me a favor, invest in a ring light. If you have a webcam, you can probably mount your webcam on top of it. I have this random Nexigo one from Amazon. It's just for Discord and stuff. I have it mounted up there just for uh, ease of access, I guess, and I can just turn it on. It's already on a mount. But uh, yeah, for this one, I can literally adjust the temperature of it, the brightness, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. It definitely illuminates my entire room. I got it last year along with my camera and it made a massive difference in my videos. Let me just tell you that right now. Made a huge difference. Before I was using like a screen lamp pointed towards myself as lighting and it did not look great at all. But trust me when I say this, ring light will improve your setup a ton in terms of recording your videos and it will make your videos a lot more appealing. If you wanna to go to the next step, maybe you have an established channel, you have 10, 20 K subs and you have a bit of extra change that you wanna put out. I got these two panel lights, There's I got two of them. There's another one on the ground down there. Don't mind the mess down there, by the way, we gotta deal with that. But I got a panel light, you can adjust the uh, temperature, the color, the brightness, all that stuff on a uh, little mini controller that's on the wire down the back. And then it comes with the stands right there. I got two of them for about $60 on Amazon. I'll have the link to that. But also it adds just a nice little illumination. If you wanted to, you could have the ring light behind the monitor directly. And then you could have two of these panel lights, one on either side. And that would definitely add a nice little illumination to your setup in general. And it would look very, very nice. But yeah, that's pretty much that for lighting. I don't have a lot more recommendations other than if you want to, you can add like RGB lighting along the top, but that's more for like background purposes. I didn't mention that in the background area. <laughs> we can see the hand movements are going crazy right here. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much that for lighting. We have these two panel lights, sorry, one panel light, one ring light, the other panel lights on the ground. Got to find a way to incorporate that in my setup. But that's pretty much it for lighting. Definitely go check these out. I would recommend investing in one of these at least. But that's pretty much that. And I'm going to get into cameras now. So for cameras now, guys, I'm going to quickly go into depth of my Canon Rebel T7. Like I said, got it a year ago. I have it on this mount right here. Um, it has a bunch of, it's very good camera for shooting pictures. 
like I do for my thumbnail screenshots, all that stuff that I sent to my designer. I use this for literally everything now. Um, but yeah, the cool thing about Canon cameras is right here we can see the software on my PC is the Canon EOS utility software. So pretty much what that is, is this wire goes directly from my camera, just in the side, just like that. It goes from my camera to my PC, and just like that, it actually allows us to ro remote record. So we can see we can wave in front of the camera, just like this and it goes directly on my computer. So I have the preview there. What I will do is it does record the audio, but the mic on the camera is really bad and it doesn't accept or uh, it isn't compatible with an exterior mic or an external mic, if that makes sense. So what I do is I record it on Streamlabs at the same time, I record this. So if I wanted to record, I can go down here to the bottom left corner and click the record button that will start recording on my camera. I record them at the same time. I do a little clap test. I have my mic set up to my Streamlabs. And then what I will do is in my editing software, I'll overlap the two. So I'll overlap the video over top of the audio track. I will disable the video on this and I'll disable the audio on that. That way we have the video, the good quality video from the camera. And then we have the good quality audio for my Streamlabs, if that makes sense. And I do that for the entire intro. I do that for the entire video, unless I am not using a face cam for the video. If it's like a tutorial, I'll literally just use the recording for my Streamlabs with my stream because you see, if I get rid of this window right here, I literally just have my desktop recording. So I'll just do that uh, fully. But yeah, that's pretty much that guys. Um, that's how, that's pretty much it for the cameras. If you want to, and you're not willing to put out, you know, $400, because you're just starting up a YouTube channel, it wouldn't really make sense. I was using a webcam, I was using C270, which is actually worse than this webcam for a very long time. Let me just tell you that. And uh, yeah, it did definitely make a massive difference upgrading to this. A lot of people pointed out the difference and um, I did have a C270, like I said, but I don't even know where it is now. I think it's broken. So I got that one, 1080p, 30fps, it's whatever. It's just for Discord, like I said, but I definitely would recommend checking out. There's a lot of options for 1080p, 60 webcams uh, for like 70, $80 on Amazon. So I would definitely recommend checking those out. Uh, pick one up for yourself, maybe. Like I said, you get the extra Christmas red, it would make a difference. But if you want to definitely go the uh, DSLR route, pick yourself up a nice camera would make a massive difference you know it's an investment like i said anything for your setup whether it's lighting background stuff camera it's a long-term investment and it's guaranteed to almost make you the return in the long run because if you do upgrade your camera obviously the quality of your videos will get better allowing for your channel to get bigger you'll make more money off that if that does make sense but that's pretty much it for the actual setup what i'm gonna get to uh is actually how you can record your intros what to mention a little tips about how to keep them short, how to keep them optimal for your videos. So I'll actually see you guys back at my setup, kind of, I'll be recording with my camera, so I'll be right here in a sec. All right, so I'm back at my setup. What I'm gonna be getting into now is how you could actually record your YouTube intros and how you should be recording them in terms of what you should be mentioning, how long you should be making it, all that stuff because if you guys do know there is an average view duration feature if you check your youtube analytics the higher the better and you want to kind of shoot for these high view durations on your videos and if you know you have a three minute intro nobody's going to watch the entire thing so that's going to really sacrifice a lot of your views on your channel so i would definitely recommend keeping your intros a under 60 seconds if you can be under 30 seconds would be great but what i do in my intro is i always say you know hey what's up it's josh back with another video i mentioned what the video is but i don't explain it too much i just say i'm going to be showing you how you can edit your very own fortnite montages in davinci resolve for 100 free you know it's not going on too long it took me maybe about 10 seconds to get that out of my mouth and that's already a sixth of kind of the intro if that makes sense right after that i always say before i get into the video you know we do what everybody does on YouTube. You do, um, however many of you guys are not subscribed, make sure to drop a sub. It is 100% free for you guys to do, and you can change your mind at a later date, or it's 100% free for you guys to do, and it helps me out a ton. Something like that, I would mention that. Uh, feel free to also like and comment, something along the lines of that as well. Kind of encourage them to take action on your video. Subscribe, like, comment, which is never a bad thing. You know, you, the more people you get liking and commenting on your videos, it's going to boost it in the algorithm. So that's great. And if you keep the intro short and sweet, that'll also boost it in the algorithm in terms of pushing it out to more people because the average view duration is higher. But yeah, I'd pretty much just do that. And then if it's a tutorial, I uh, mention all the stuff that'll be in the description. If it's an ad, I'll be like, go check out blah, blah, blah at the top of the description something like that just mention uh hope you guys do enjoy the video or something like that 
and uh, that's pretty much all you got to do it's not something simple you just got to get used to talking in front of a camera and being comfortable like I am right now I'm literally talking to no one but I've become accustomed to just talking to a camera talking naturally but uh, yeah it's pretty much all you gotta know in terms of recording your videos just get comfortable talking to the camera and then just get you know accustomed to speaking in a way that isn't you know too informal but also not too robotic if that makes sense like i try to find the sweet spot in between if that makes sense to you guys and you guys are picking up on that but that's pretty much what i do um that's pretty much how you record the intros now that's all that i wanted to really mention on my camera and my setup using my phone so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hop on over to my pc and i'm going to go through all my streamlabs settings all that stuff and uh, hopefully you guys can learn something from that as well um so i will see you guys on my pc all right guys so i am in streamlabs obs right now uh, it's kind of weird recording my streamlabs obs with streamlabs obs but i'm just going to be going into my brief settings for a recording that i use for my thing um so all you want to do for this i'll quickly show you is you want to kind of have like a new scene so I just go to uh, untitled right here just name it new scene whatever and then obviously we don't the screen's gonna be black for you so I'm actually going to add a video capture real quick and that is actually what we add this right here so all you gotta do to actually add this is you get a plus right here you got to display capture and then you'll select your monitor and that's how you can actually get your monitor to show up on the screen that's why my thing was black for a second and that's pretty much all you need for recording if you are doing a game you can add a game capture but display capture is the only thing you really need for actually recording programs like davinci resolve after effects all that stuff and uh, yeah that's pretty much that for scene setup all i got here is my microphone setting so i have my dial adjusted to my microphone the way i want it to be and then we have our desktop audio being recorded at this level right here i have it negative 9.4 decibels just because that's what kind of works for me with my microphone levels all right so now going through settings there's all these subcategories right here so for general it's just pretty much everything is default for stream i have my youtube linked just like that and then i have my twitch logged in if i need to this is where it actually comes down to uh, what you want to be adjusting so for streaming, I have my bitrate controlled to CBR, 5000, low latency, high. That pretty much doesn't really matter anymore because I don't stream. But for my recording, I have the exact same stuff except for my recording formats, MP4, CBR, 10,000 bitrate. That doesn't really matter that much when you are recording like a display capture, like a DaVinci Resolve or something like that, because recording high bitrate doesn't really impact it too much. Uh, it would really matter if you're kind of doing Fortnite or something like that. So if you're doing Fortnite, I would recommend something from like 20 to 20. 25,000 if you're doing that because that'll give you a nice smooth 60 FPS recording for that itself and then for audio we just have my basic audio bit rate right here if you go to audio right here I have my mic set to my Fafine K58D microphone I'll have a review for that coming out soon by the way and then for my desktop audio I just have my uh, external device that I use for that which is actually my headset and then for video we just have basic 1920 by 1080 my downscale filter is Lanxos uh, common FPS value of 60 and then that's pretty much that don't have anything insane in terms of all the other stuff but yeah that's pretty much how you can just record videos but uh, yeah if you want to add something like a webcam you can just go here to video capture device and then you would just set it to whatever uh, one you want you just go like this add source and then set it to your webcam my webcam isn't plugged in right now so that's why I'm actually unable to do that but that's actually how you can record your own videos inside of Streamlabs OBS uh, you can use OBS they're pretty much the exact same except for if you're using Streamlabs OBS it's more for just like being able to read chat and stuff I guess but uh, for me it's just simplistic so I just decide to use this but I'm actually gonna get into how you can record Fortnite stuff on your PC for 100% free all right guys so now for the Fortnite stuff if you have an Nvidia graphics card make sure to actually look up in Nvidia highlights if you do not have one and let's say you have like an AMD one well just look up Radeon recording software or something like that I know Nvidia highlights does work so you can actually just record that or download that sorry not record and then all you got to do once you have it downloaded is just press alt D on your keyboard and this will actually bring up the menu right here and the cool thing about GeForce experience is that you can choose these settings to record so you can set your thing to like 60 FPS 1080p max bitrate and you can adjust the length of like your capture and then it also does have a cool feature for clipping called instant replay i've gone over this in previous videos make sure to go check out the video that i'll link in the description for that and then you can also stream directly on the platform itself which is a cool option 
and uh, you can just tinker with your settings in here, like your audio, your mic, uh, your bitrate, your keyboard shortcuts for recording, all that stuff. That's just pretty much like a one minute breakdown of how you could actually record using GeForce Experience. You can use it for all your games. I would recommend doing it because it records directly on your graphics card versus Streamlabs OBS, like a third party software having to actually do that itself and kind of it takes a bigger toll on your graphics card, if that makes sense, tanks performance a bit more. But uh, yeah, with NVIDIA experience, it kind of uh, is integrated on your graphics card itself and runs a lot better and a lot smoother when you're actually recording and playing. But yeah, that guys, that's actually pretty much it for the video. If you guys did enjoy, like, comment, subscribe is a bit different than usual. I showed all the different tips and tricks, how to record intros, videos, all that stuff. If you want to see another video like this, feel free to actually leave that down below in the comments. I will be reading all your guys' comments if you guys do have questions down there. I recommend another video in the future if you guys want to see something on the channel. Hope you guys did enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in a future video and I will see you guys later. Peace out.